Yeah, you feel it a bit more than the balloon. It looks like you're dragging out of the usual feeling, feeling like I always feel when I'm on the road. Really? Yeah. Is the road tough? I mean, actually, you guys spend a lot of time in the woods, don't you? Yeah. Uh, it's just we never, we never quite managed to make it better, sort of, uh, proper hours, so... Uh -huh. So, uh, well, no, we were all, we all out last night. Uh-huh. <coughs> like to see some beat with covers down. Uh -huh. So it all got a bit, uh, got a bit out of hand after that. Well, you didn't get on the distance on the side of the movie, that's how I was doing. I guess this was the, the Calvin Club, mm -hmm. the last time you, did, you actually performed. Yeah. Did you do it this time as well? No, no. No, last time we, we uh, last time we performed, um, I Joe Love Away, <coughs> and, um, well, I don't, I think, I think it was more, I think we, we more of a, I don't, I don't think we were invited more as we actually said uh, we're going to perform here tonight, mate. And then, uh, I don't think we were invited more as we actually said we're going to perform here tonight, mate. And then, I don't think we were invited more as we actually said we're going to perform here tonight, mate. And then, I don't think we were invited more as we actually said we're going to perform here tonight, mate. And then, I don't think we were invited more as we actually said we so we just sat down and drank and watched that. My homecoming, you, you, you can would expect you guys to, uh, to act up a bit. Uh, that's what we do. Maybe you let them down in that sense. Okay. All right, Zan, you're the one who's got We hear that you completed the, the new recording in 15 days. Yeah. As far as today's thing, that is that is great. Yeah. What, what was behind that? Um. <coughs> Well, we just got we, we have, I mean, because I wrote all the songs, on, all the songs were written and arranged, and all the lyrics were done before, well, most of them were in, before we in the studio, so we knew, um, we knew what the songs were, we knew what everybody had to play, so it's just a test of going, we're doing what I mean, we're doing, sort of, uh, one track, one track every day we were there, so we, uh, you know, we, we like to work fast anyway because I think the, the, long, the more time you spend over something, the, the worse it gets. You mm. start to go and record it down again as quickly as possible. Because it, then it, if it sounds like if it sounds like you were recording when you're fresh, then when, when you listen back to it, it sounds fresh. You need to do it. That's the idea. To record that quickly, though, I mean, not only would you have had to have the lyrics and all these all down, but I guess all the parts were, were sort of fixed in, in, inside of your head. Yeah. And did you sort of basically take everybody by the hand and say, you do this, you do this, you yep. do this? Well, that's, that's the way we work anyway. That's the way I work anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. I write a song. I've been writing the new album over the past, I don't know, maybe a year. So when I, when I play the songs, I mean, we don't do demo recordings anymore. We never use that at the time. But when I play the songs to myself in my head, the more I play them, the more, the more I can, <coughs> the more I know whether we need a string section or whether we need, or whether Gwigsy has to play his bass in a certain way or whether it's going to be, going to be acoustic or electric. So by the time we got to recording, I knew exactly what, I knew exactly what the album was going to sound like before we even started. Mm. Oh, good. It's also oh, good. The, you know, you, you talk about things in terms of, uh, orchestrating the thing in your head, right? And then leading everybody through it. But to look at the band, you would not think these are guys who go into the studio and do what they're told. <laughs> uh, no, they're not. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, well, it's not. It's not. It's not a matter of. I mean, the, we work very, very quick, and I think everybody's a good enough musician now. I mean, but like Bonehead, Alan, and Quicks. Um, very quick, you only need to tell them once. So you just say, play it. I show them how to, how to play it, and they they would be doing it in sort of one or two takes. So, but it, the, the biggest problem with these lot is trying to keep them out of the pub. They usually just down the bar all the time getting pissed. So they usually ends up me and Owen, the uh, the man who uh, I co-produced the album with, sat in the studio going, you know, it's a drummer, you know what I mean? Down the pub with the singer. But, but apart from that, it's easy then. They don't make any sort of creative stance saying, well, I want to do it this <coughs> way. No, you know, no, so I, 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 I'd like to do it right here. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes they, sometimes they, sometimes I, I just let them play whatever they feel like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it Most of the time, I tell them what to play. And they're happy, more than happy to do it. 
Well, they haven't, well, well, they haven't cut the band yet. Mr. Kaiser, he has an advanced copy of the new album. I'm <coughs> listening to it. It has a, both the lyrics as well. And he's been, he's been trying to make sense of it as best he can. I was wondering, uh, is your approach to, to lyrics a perspective uh, that much different this time than it was last time? Or is, it, is that even important to the um, project? I, don't, I tend not to think about The lyrics usually, well, the lyrics are definitely the last thing to come mm. in the mm. song. It's not something that I, I don't consider myself uh, a particularly good lyricist until I s <coughs> when I'm writing lyrics, I always think to me they all sound a bit corny and that. But I tend not to think about it until after I finish the record and look back and go, well, I'm not good. My perspective on lyrics is just depends on me and me when I get up in the morning. You know, I always have to think about it. Unless there's, unless a certain song lends itself to a certain mood and then if it's, a, if it's a rock song like What's the Story, Morning Glory, then obviously you're gonna, they were going to be quite um, intense lyrics, if you like. Or if it was going to be like Don't Look Back in Hand, they were, they were all going to be quite hopeful lyrics. But when a song is sort of in between the two, then I just... Reason that that subject came up is because um, <coughs> on the first album you had the thing about I want to be rock and roll star, sort of a declaration of sorts. Um, this time around, obviously, you, you've achieved the initial objective. And you're sort of in a state of flux right now, mm -hmm. and this, he seemed to think that the lyrics reflected you being in a state of flux, more detached. Um, I. Yeah, well, uh, are we reading too much into it? Maybe? No, I mean, I, I, me personally, I don't read. I don't read the words. I mean, and, well, I mean, I know what they mean to me, but I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't ever tell anybody that the lyrics mean there's a big story behind because people should get from it whatever it is to get from it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say it means one thing or the other. If if it's tough, if it's, I think that, and that's fine by me. And what my my own perspective on it is that definitely maybe was a song about I'm off and all style was a song about dreaming of being in a band and thinking that it was all going to be um, it was all going to be fun when, when you're in a band and on the other hand Morning Glory which is actually an album about being in a band and sometimes it isn't uh, as fun as it's made up mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun <coughs> One other element he senses from these lyrics is that you seem to be suggesting that things are progressing a bit too quickly for you. You're sort of being swept away, and there's a, there's a sense of a sense of astonishment on your part. At the same time, there's a sense of uh, uh, wanting uh, time to do things at your own speed. Um, is, is that present at all? Uh. No, I don't. You know, I think things just don't progress at the pace that they're meant to progress. At. I don't think that it's gone too fast. I don't think it's gone too fast. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I mean, if, if that's what it sounds like, then maybe subconsciously I am. I mean, I don't know. Because sometimes when you write, when you write words, sound music, or both, in my case, then sometimes you're too close to really understand what it is. But if, sometimes it's better. If if you can stand back and see the whole picture, you know. I mean, it is, it is progressing rather fast, but I wouldn't want to change it or anything like that. Because, I mean, this, this is just the way it was meant to go for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that you ever try to speak to yourself in the lyrics? You try to like, write lyrics to sort of talk to you, saying, this is the way things have happened, this is the way it should be, to prepare you for, for what you're going through? Um, I suppose I try, but I never quite, never quite get around to doing it. Uh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose any of us just try to talk to themselves about themselves, but I, I, can, I, I can never finish off something. I always start, I always start with the best intentions and then I always end up going on about winning, you know, or drunk, or both. Yeah, I don't know.
in an end of the interview you were recently lamenting the fact that you couldn't write lyrics as, as much as you wanted to. Yeah. Did, did you have a lot of trouble coming up with lyrics? Um, not really. Um, I mean, it's not that I can't write lyrics. It's just that it takes it takes me. If if I'm like if I'm writing a song and I'm in the mood, I, mean, I can maybe write I don't know three or four a night. But if if say for instance we uh, say for instance recording the album, I think we're coming towards getting the vocals down for all the tracks and I think I needed there was I think three songs that needed lyrics and I wasn't particularly interested in writing because we were in the studio and that, that was difficult because I wasn't in the mood. But once I'm in the mood I can write forever. Nothing all gone I guess. <coughs> I mean, the, the subject of lyrics is because um, there seemed to be a there seems to be more substance this time around. Um, the first time it was all sort of bluster and you know we're here mm. we've arrived and then i guess in between the two albums you had a, a single called some might say mm. which seemed to suggest suggest a bit more of a, a philo philosophical uh, <coughs> bent on your part and yeah. that that same sort of attitude is reflected maybe a little bit more in the lyrics this time around yeah um yeah it's positive i like to say now but the, the, the lyrics of the first LP were, were basically about dreaming and what it would be like to be in a band that was written very naively. Uh, and the lyrics since Oasis become successful have maybe been, they have become more philosophical because as you, as you, you know, as you get older and as you become more successful within the band, you tend to get more philosophical because maybe you travel the world and new people and have new experiences so maybe you can put it through something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so more, mm. Not for them more probably than not. He's wondering though, legend has it that there was originally the band Oasis and you later came on saying uh, that you guys didn't have a crack at it and uh, I'll make something of this band. Yeah. In watching you guys perform he still senses a sort of a, a distance between you and the members. Uh, oh yes, well, I suppose so, because, I mean, music writes a song, so we don't need to know what, mm. what, 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 what direction the band is going in. Mm -hmm. It's only me, I'm the lucky one who has to go and do all the press. Um, <laughs> You're like the boss. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kept the busiest by far. Right, right. So, maybe, well, because I'm kept the busiest, maybe the other four tend to, socialize a bit more together and I'm, mm. I'm usually working but um, yes it's true yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I guess that's more because of the dynamics within the band now as opposed to the fact that you came on later yeah oh yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. do all the work now well we've just, I mean, we've just got a brand new drummer mm -hmm. he's only been in the band about six weeks and he's you know he's like he's been in the band ten years and he's got nothing to do with that and it's just the fact that um, I'll probably end up doing press all day and they'll be shopping together. So they probably, so they, so they, they put, I mean, obviously apart from my brother, um, them four probably know each other better than, than I know each one of them. I see, I see. Mm. No, so there was a little task manager. Uh, mm. You don't think that it's necessary for you to sort of build up that kind of rapport with uh, the other guys? Or do you think that that's, that, that really is not necessary? As long as you do take care of business. I haven't really thought about it. I don't, I don't think anybody else has. Mm -hmm. It's not been a problem. So, mm -hmm. um, no, I don't know. I've never actually sat down and thought about the significance of it all, really. Mm -hmm. We just sort of, um, I think they're quite happy with the fact that they don't have to do much, much work than I do because they're always better. And I'm not. <laughs> so, um, you know. Mm -hmm. But I suppose, I mean, you know. What you gotta do to get on with it? Well, that's it. You see, I mean, not, I mean, they understand, and I do as well. That not nobody particularly wants to talk to the drummer about the lyrics because all all the singer for that matter, <laughs> unless because they, they they didn't write them mm -hmm. and they didn't write the songs, so they can't explain where the songs came from or 
or where the next stones are going to. So it's only, it's only natural that, that I should have to do all the work. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't get paid anyone work for it at all, but there you go. <laughs> <coughs> Things seem to work out as long as you take the reins and, and you, you get out there and, 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 and get the job done. And you know, it's kind of like, I guess, what you would call a benign dictatorship. You know, you're left to do things because you can do them. And I guess as long as you're in control of things, they, they will go okay. Nobody else uh, wants to sort of impinge on your, uh, on your power. Or your, they just basically say, well, no, no, we'll take care of it. And I just basically say, it's your round, my son, and we're off down the fucking pub, and uh, we'll see you later on. <laughs> Same me. <laughs> oh, we're off shopping, and we'll catch you later on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, do you to I think it's a, it's a two part question. The first part, second part, you haven't said that. First part being that a lot of other musicians your age will uh, infuse their music with sort of a, a little punk spirit, either the, the nihilism of punk or the, the cynicism or the, the humor, cynical humor of punk or whatever. In your case, it doesn't seem to be present at all. Uh, that was the first part of it. Yeah. I first told you to do the uh, <coughs> Oh yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't see any point in a... Uh, I'm not a very angst-ridden person or mm -hmm. nihilistic or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm a very optimistic person. Mm -hmm. Full of hope. So uh, I suppose it's only like that <coughs> music and lyrics going to sound like that. I never considered myself a punk rocker. Um, um, I, I don't know. It's true, because the songs are all very hopeful. Like, uh, whatever, some might say. Uh, live forever. Uh, all songs are hope, so... Yeah. That's just me being optimistic. Mm -hmm. That's what he's always noticed about about your your, your message. It's, it's very optimistic, and it's, that's a, a very unusual thing in this day and age. When people sort of uh, refuse to embrace optimism. Yeah. I guess it, it's like you say, it's, it's your character, your personality, sort of rising above it all. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I think I think people are are wise enough to, to realise that the life that we lead is not it's not a bed of roses, but I don't think we need that ramming down the throats every day. We, people know how bad life is. But I think sometimes people forget forget how good life is. Sometimes. Maybe they need reminding that the world isn't such a bad place. I, mean, I know we live in a world with wars and racism and all the rest of it. But I mean, pe people know that because of television. And the TV never reports the good things. The TV always reports the bad things. So, Maybe if Oasis could be a little, little radio, little radio message to the rest of the world saying that there is, there is good things that can happen, um, then fine. But I don't think people need, need to tell him too much about bad things to be known for them. I know a punk element that in your approach seems to be the, uh, the format of the music. It's, it's just straight ten pound alley. You know. Verse, verse, chorus, yeah. verse, bridge. And you even, in the lyrics, you put that in the middle of the yeah. bridge. And what's behind that? Uh, I suppose it's just through listening to... Listening to bands like the Beatles and the Small Faces, I suppose. They were, they were, they were, it was what we call... Oh, that's what I know in the musical terms of classic... Classic groups and classic songwriters. I suppose it comes from that, really. I mean, the first... The first record I ever heard, the first piece of music I ever heard, was probably the Beatles. So, it's only natural when you come to pick up the guitar and decide that you want to be a songwriter or you want to be in a group, but that's, that's, that's how you're going to approach things. But I want to go, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, an innovator, I'm not an inventor. I don't claim to be inventing anything new, I just claim to be passing on what's gone on over the last 30 years of music uh, outside of things. People have talked about performing pop music in the present day, and they talk about the, the limitations, how there's nothing new under the sun. The only thing you can do is sort of pick, select eclectically from, from what's happened thus far. Is, are, are you in that school? Uh, I'm not. <coughs> say in sort of general terms is 
there's nothing, there's nothing new to create. For me personally, because I'm not really into creating anything now, I'm just going to explain what's wrong with it. But, I mean, I can't speak for other musicians because I don't, I don't know that many for a start. So I can only speak for myself and to me, I just want to be like the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure I'm going to be like that. Anybody, mm-hmm. And if anybody else can come up with any new musical style, then mm-hmm. please let me know. <laughs> You always just seems unusual that you, you can say things like, you know, you want to be like the Beatles in this day and age. I mean, there are a few fans that can get away with that. And, uh, you know, people love, uh, if, if a person touches yourself, uh, so, so nobody really uh, huh. thinks about it, uh, gives it a second thought. And you seem to be able to get away with that just because well. you're doing, doing the, the correct thing. Yeah. Okay, well, well. I don't know, but we don't, I mean, we all said that when, when we first did our first ever interview in Catch and England, we said, what you ought to achieve when you said we want to be bigger than the Beatles or as big as the Beatles <coughs> because I, I, I believe anyway that <coughs> I believe if you want if, to be if you want to be in a band where you want to start a group then you should start a group with the intention of being the biggest band ever in the world or I don't think I don't see there's any point of being in a band I think you should start start the group to be as universal to to mean the same to people who live on your street as people who live on the street of Tosca, which is what the Beatles were, and that's what we set out to do, was mm. not, not to be an English band or have labels stuck on our music, we just wanted to play songs. We were just a band to play songs for people who were. No, 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 no. And a guy who he's ever heard say that, he uh, talked about... Uh, talk about being a band in terms of that sort of massive, well, you know that is much less of an ambition. Um, you know, very few people talk about it in these terms. <coughs> mm-hmm. well, you want I hold up, see that Oh, so I guess we're gonna get some photos. <laughs> no, it's so so Ah, okay. Yeah, I guess we're gonna get some photos. Uh, please, thank you very much. <laughs>